Now, when I think of your story, I think of Psalm 23, where it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And you literally had to walk through the valley of the shadow of death as you transported bodies that were ravaged by Ebola. Where did you find the courage? I find a courage in God first. And in my work, I believe that God gave me the strength to do that work. Because he's awesome. He's marvelous. He gave us the strength, the hope, to hope in him. Now, you did this as a volunteer for free. Yes. And most people wouldn't even do this if you paid them. What was it in you that thought, yes, I'm going to help my country? Seriously. As for me, I don't like to see need and don't partake in it. Seriously. If I was even bigger at that time when we had a civil war, I was not going to sit home. I was going to fight. And I, was going, I was going to be a part of the peace today that we are enjoying in Liberia. Yeah, actually, I was home. No one called me to do the work. Nobody in my country asked me to do that work. I went there. I took the risks. No one invited me. No one asked me. No one took my number to call me. I left work at the, the Labra National Lepers and TB Control Program. It's the hospital I'm working with. I just came from work. I sneak out because my mother said, I know you. You are brave. I don't want you to be part of this burial team or Ebola work. Don't be a part of any of it. Just stay home. I'm going to lock you up. I say, I'm not going anywhere. I pretend that I have to say, I'm not going. I sneak in and I went out. That was how I went to the Ministry of Health. And I asked the people, I want to do this work. They said, no, you can't do it. Go back home. You can't do it. It's deadly, you know, and you are a female. You might be in sorry hard for the deceit and then touch someone in the house that's living. You don't know as to whether that person has been playing with that dead body. So I said, no, I can't catch Ebola. I will, I will go and fight. Yeah, it was. And one of the things that really kept me up is prayer and listening to my music, gospel music. Now, the work you did was featured in an Oscar-nominated uh, documentary, Body Team 12. How has that documentary affected your life? I know someone somewhere right now have that faith in God because of that documentary and the work I was doing for my country. I know that someone somewhere, if there's an outbreak, they won't sit home. They will have that confidence, that trust in their self and in God, they can do something to calm down a situation within their country, especially nurses, doctors, yeah. Now, hope has, in a sense, risen from the ashes because now you're working with Operation Blessing and you're helping the orphans of Ebola. And some of those orphans you actually met, you actually carried their parents' bodies. Um, and, and that was the first time you've met them. And now you're, you've gone back to help them. What does that mean to you to be helping them? It's a blessing. It's a blessing to me and to them because I was thinking when we were collecting their parents' body, who will help these children, God? Who would take care of them? How they will, they will eat? How would they go to school? How would they be close? How would they be shelter? They were in need of help and Operation Blessing came in at a time where no one, even the government of Liberia, was not able to support them, and they are not even able right now to support them. The work that Operation Blessing is doing for them is a hard work for even an individual to do, but Operation Blessing is actually shouldering all of the responsibility of them. Now, for someone watching, maybe they're not in Liberia, or they're in a different country, and you know, they're going through something difficult or they feel like, you know, I want to do something to help. And I know you did something to help your country. What advice would you give to them? I want that person seeing me, listening to the sound of my voice to bring up that thing within them. Let them be strong whenever there's a crisis. Look up to God and then join that fight so that their country, their society, can be protected by God and them, so that they can be remembered, so that they can be proud of their country that this disease did not kill the entire country. Because if I wasn't going to be on that fight, who knows, my mother, my son, including myself, or I could have lost my brothers and my sisters, you know, to that disease. So I want for someone watching me to be courageous, 
have faith in God and in their self, they can do that work.